ja hovamalak olamolamat ja hovamalak jäämi rakkis ja hovagadol ma kärjen tios ja hova eronai ja hova elohim kurios tios panta kreta kurios tios pistos elda et ja hova el emuna ja hova I Basilian Kurios, Otios, O Panta Creta. Basilios, Basilian Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova the Barhalal, Elohim the Barhalal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebora. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Isunton Kurion, Panta Creta. Kurion Numahagion Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Mishpat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself up to unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them. Who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The very purpose of our life for which cause we have been kept alive so that we could lamad to be taught are in the process of Mantana plus Didasco to do that which is pleasing to God the Father. That's the sole purpose for which reason we have been kept alive on this earth. Because the glory of our Lord of our God he has been recorded and kept for us in the Bible the very form of him which has been reduced into the standards of this world, which we have to incline our heart unto his testimonies. And we need to turn away from every false way. And we need to learn the word of the Lord God and do the will of Lord God by beholding that which is true in the sight of God. When we behold that which is right and perfect in the sight of Lord God, then He is going to make us alive in the paths of His Word. So, dear brethren, the great prayer for our life to get understanding, to guard His law, to observe with our whole heart, to walk in the path of His commandments is the very reason we breathe. So, dear brethren, using the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound, Let's come back and learn what and how we have to be in this pilgrimage trip as a pastor teacher. When he's been compared to the angel of the Lord, when we look in Malachi 2, 7 and 8. He is the messenger of Lord God of hosts. Then what characters does he possess? Besides that, in Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, God the Father makes us to be the disciples of that which is good. That's what we were reading yesterday in Titus 3.8.
so that the reduced form of glory which has been written for us in the word from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 we should completely guard it and we should make the word of the Lord of our God to be the number one priority in our lives so we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord my God infinitely divine Holy Father once again coming unto the grace to learn the word Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message, which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in a truly past. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 1, when we are looking upon the standards of the way of these people, they are thinking rituals in the church to come to the church for the purpose of having a religion but not a relationship with my Christ wherewith he asks by series of question and verse 11 and following who hath asked did you trade my coats teaching to us the importance the great unique word of the Lord of our God which we need to learn beginning with verse number 11 he writes over here saying that Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodoma. Give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. He is referring to the people who should be the teaching of peace or double blessing of peace to the world, called to be Erishalayim. They turned out to become like Sodomites and the Gomorrites. Sodomites burning, Gomorrites submersion. So in comparison to the word of the Lord of a God, he says in verse 9, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been a Sodoma, we should have been like unto Gomorrah. And then he says, Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodoma. He is comparing the rulers or the commander-in-chief or the one who is in authority or a leader or a magistrate to be like Sodoma. And then he says, Give ear unto the law of our God, you people. That is what the people have submerged to themselves. So he writes in verse 11, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? People in the present Christendom, they think giving sacrifice or making vain oblations to the Lord, either of burnt offering or trespass offering or guilt offering or sin offering, whatever the offering they could give, that's enough and God could reconcile to them. But here he says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? said the Lord I am full that is he meant to say it is enough I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of the fat beasts and I delight not in the blood of the bullocks or the lambs or of the he gods when you come to appear before me that is what when you want to inspect before me who hath required this at your hand to trade my courts today much of the people who have failed to be as Christians in my Christ. They think the things what they are performing out, the things what they are looking out is greater. By giving some tithes, by making some time in the church to attend or to be ritualistic but no reality. He says, why you have to appear before me? Who has required you to happen this? Who has caused you to have to trade in my courts or to keep your foot trampled in the church? Bring no more vain oblations. The same thing what he reads for us when we read in, Ma in Matthew chapter 12. When he is answering them about the work being done by David in trading his coat. He says in verse 7, saying, If you had known what meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. The reason over here is meant to say, God the Father always wants to give you that which is in the standards of mercy. He requires mercy and not sacrifice. The word sacrifice is tusia. And the word mercy is Elios. God the Father requires Elios not to see her. The same thing over here when he's writing in Isaiah chapter 1. 
he claims in verse number 12 13 to say bring no more vain oblations the word over here when he's teaching to us meant to say don't get to me such offerings of vain things the word vain over here meant to say that which is empty which is not having any meaning that which is absolutely nothing so he teaches that which is useless one don't get and what is useless one you are giving your life as a living sacrifice is great useful to the Lord then giving your money to the Lord saying this will be the sacrifice that I'm going to give to Christ he wants you to look and understand why we need to be a scribe because the very glory of God is reduced for us in the form of writing therefore Christ our Lord our God in Matthew 5 he says he shall not let go iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. Even the minute dot, even the minute thing like a stroke of a line which could make a difference between P and R and the minute dot which could make a difference between I and L. He says you cannot have it. These things are not there. Even this minute things what have been given this I never let go. So he says over here, I don't want any vain oblations. And that's what much of the people today are not able to realize. That rightly dividing the word of God and teaching the word of God is number one priority for the church. If the pastor teacher fails to do so, then the oblations what you're getting are vain. So he says in verse 13 of Isaiah 1, bring no more. The word bring is nothing but do not enter to increase your things, that which are absolutely falsehood, emptiness and nothingness. And this false oblations like an offering I hate. So he writes for us to increase the word of the Lord God to teach from the standards of not letting go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera because this very word of the Lord of a God is nothing but the glory of God. You know tomorrow when you will say what is the reason of your life you would say I want to glorify God. God is not glorified by your sacrifice but is glorified by the way how you learn the word of the Lord God and you reflect it back in this dying and perishing world, sinful and adulterous generation, where they do not hold the word of the Lord God, but rather you are shining in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations, that the word of Lord God is in you and you have taken it and you reflect them back. That's why he says, bring no more vain oblations. In Matthew 13, 52, why you have to be a scribe. Joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias is the main purpose of every believer why he's been kept alive. If he doesn't grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, then the very purpose of the glory of God which has been reduced to us into the form of handwriting or which have been recorded and kept, they do not make a sense. So dear brethren, these vain oblations are what much of the people, they are not able to understand. They think these vain oblations are enough. But these vain oblations are not the things which the word of God has commanded you to do. Giving your life as a living sacrifice is what it has been demanded. So how do you become a living sacrifice? Transforming your flesh in the power of the Spirit into the Word of God is a living sacrifice. If you don't transform your flesh into the power of the Word of Lord God, you would never understand the power of the Scriptures, neither the power of God. When we read in Mark chapter 12, when they come along to ask in verse 24, To whom does she belong? The Sadducees raises a question. But here we look very clearly which says that you haven't understood the power, the power, dunamis power of God, neither you have been acquainted with the scriptures. Those who have been acquainted with the scriptures now, they make their flesh to be the word of God in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And that's what he says, bring no more vain oblations. We are getting vain oblations in comparison to become scribes to the Lord. 
If you don't become scribe, if you're not growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, if you're not caring to become, to respect the word of Lord God, just reading the word of God is not enough. You have to be the man who engrafe now or write the word of God in the standards of the translation first and that will not satisfy you. You have to go to the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. That's what our life is. Because the very form of the glory of God is reduced for us into writing and how much you will love the word of God by not letting go even iota upon iota and Carrera upon Carrera, the greater you take your time in learning and understanding them and writing, that's what it makes you to be the true respecters of the Word of God. Therefore, he said, Lama, learn, learn to do that which is good. The people are interested to do that which is of Kalos, excellent, but they are not interested to do that which is Agathos, which is having virtue in it. And having virtue or those things which are pure, there can be nothing else on this earth than the word of God. If you have your Bible to Philippians chapter 4, here we find which Apostle Paul writes for us, particularly beginning to say in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And he doesn't stop there. He writes, those things which you have both learned, again, to become disciple, and you have received, and heard, and seen in me, that you do. The word over here, do, is very, very important. It is called to be prasso, that meant to say to exercise and to practice, to accomplish, and to make it to become your affair with the Lord or business with the Lord. That's what you have been kept alive. The same thing over there in Second Corinthians chapter 5 in verse 10. What have we done with this body? If God the Father would ask you tomorrow when you stand in the presence of God the Father, he claims over there, according to that he hath done. Again, the word done over here is prasso, which meant to say to practice or to make it to become to your way of life. What have you done, whether it be good or bad? Because you're not able to realize the power of this body, because the body has been given for us, as he writes in First Kings chapter 8, verse 40, to live all the days of this life in the land which God the Father has given. The flesh has been given to transform it into the Word of God, so that you could realize your health is the Word of God, your bone marrow is the Word of God, your eyesight is the Word of God, everything, whatever you talk from top of the head till the top of your feet is nothing but the Word of God, because he said from every mannerism of sickness, he shall deliver you. And that's what we are reading in Psalms 91 verse 9. If Yehovah our Lord our God is our habitation, if Yehovah our Lord our God is our retreat and dwelling place, then he said, no evil shall befall thee, or you will encounter any mannerism of evil, including every way of life that you're living. And the reason why does he say so is purely because we are giving preference to the Word of God. We are giving preference to the right sound exegetical Bible doctrine. And since we are giving such great reference and preference to the Word of Lord of our God, no evil thing, and what evil thing it could be apart from false doctrine in your life? Do you know what corrupts you? There could be no evil than the evil of having lies in you. The lies where the world is running along, thinking that it is truth. If they would really understand what is the purpose of their life with the word of Lord God, they would join as disciples and grow up as grammatiers. They would not let go the reduced form of glory in the writing. They would really count each and every alphabet or iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. And they would do that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord, my God. They wouldn't stop. They wouldn't wait. They would surely continue and they would go on to perform the work of my Christ to the highest. But the problem with them is they haven't joined as disciples because they do not know the power which God the Father has given to us is to be as disciples as Technon believer in John 1 12. So the what the Bible teaches in comparison to the way what we reflect is absolutely zero zero point zero zero. It do not match. Thus, when we do not match the glory of God, we are not seeking those things that which are pure in the sight of God. What else could be purity for you than the word of God to be number one? Therefore, he writes for us, bring no more your vain oblations. 
your incense is an abomination unto me the sweet smelling fragrance which should go in you as he writes for us in second corinthians chapter 2 in verse 14 in every place what we go what we ought to be he writes over here saying that now thanks be to god who always causeth us to triumph in christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place so that for we are unto god a sweet savor of christ in them that are saved and in them that perish so the knowledge of the word of lord god what he has given for us over here which causes us to triumph as a sweet savor unto christ but here he claims in isaiah chapter 1 saying that in verse number 14 in 15 incense has become an abomination unto me over here abomination is nothing but disgusting thing it is like the sheer rut of a smell or that which has been rotten dead body so your fragrance what it has to be to be a pleasant one to the lord it has become like a way called to be an absolute sheer or an absolute disgusting thing and why does he write so why does he record us so because dear brethren the things which the fat on the liver on the things pertaining to the levitical offerings what he has given to those animals when they would be presented to the lord the smell would please the lord and he would be pleased but now our very life which has to be a living sacrifice to god the father hasn't been pleasing to my lord so he writes incense has become an abomination unto me the new moons and the sabbaths that is what the festivals what they would go through the calling of the assemblies that is what your convocational meetings i cannot away with it that meant to say i am not able to overcome because iniquity he calls it to be wickedness today if you are not graduating in the fear of the lord of a god you may come to assemble yourselves you may come to pay your festivals together you may come for the sabbaths you may come to be in the standards of your great meeting before the lord to give incense but all of these things he claims he claims to say it's iniquity it's an absolute wickedness to me and then in verse 14 he writes for us to understand that in verse 14 he writes your new moons your appointed feasts my soul hated the word hated over here for us is called to be sane hate with the hate of like a dog they are a trouble unto me when you trouble the lord of a god not having your clear thinking in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost is going to trouble you so he writes the things what you are doing they are a burden unto me or toil unto me they are wearing unto me and then furthermore he writes again for us they are a trouble unto me i am weary to bear the word weary is called i am impatient for what is impatient to bear or to lift up your thinking the reason in the present christendom why many pastors are dying in this corona covid cases lord god the father is impatient when you write when you don't rightly divide the word of god as a pastor teacher your duty in making disciples or making them to grow up as grammatias by rightly dividing the word of god the very essence of god which is given for us in the form of writing called to be the glory of god not letting go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera but making number one priority to diligently seek and search by fulfilling the great command of my christ in second timothy 2 15 which is to spoudiza be diligent enough to study to learn to make to understand in the concept of dispensations in the concept of isagogic categories and making exegetical word of god to be number one priority you haven't been diligent you haven't been spoudiza over there so that's what it causes a lot of problem for you he is impatient towards you 
God the Father, what rule he has kept for us in John 1, 18, exegiomai, that's what the pulpit has to learn. If the pulpit doesn't walk in such way, no matter how great, old, or, or ang, or brave you may be, and not doing the work of the Lord God according to his terms and conditions, you just vanish. God cannot bear you. He is impatient towards you. You know, even we on this earth, in our day-to-day -day life, if we are not performing the things of God the Father according to, or if we are not performing in a relationship the things that which should be in accord and harmony with us, even we get annoyed and ruined. Then how much more God the Father when His Word is not being honored above His name? And why His Word is very important? Because His Word is the glory of God. He has reduced it for us in the form of writing and given in our hands so that we could guard it. We could protect it and we could make a living exhibition of that word in our lives by living a life that could please God the Father according to the word of God in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. That's why he has honored his word above his name. And he has given this word of Lord our God in our lives so that we could properly take care of this word. So twice he writes in Isaiah 57, 14 and 66, 1 and 2. Because he wants those people who tremble at his word called to be Nabat. He's regarding them. He's regarding them so that he can show the favor of pleasure. He can show the favor of love. He can show the favor of care. The one who would tremble at his word. He wants them. Because that's the very glory of God. And you can say, I have read the Bible, it's enough. No. You have to be a scribe, says Matthew 13, 52. A scribe is the one who writes the word of God. In the 13th century, Thomas Kempis, we read an example about Swami Vivekananda, the way how he influenced him through that book of imitation of Christ. He was a scribe. You really love the Lord of a God, you will not let go even to be from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to be expounded. But how many pastors are doing that? Why will not the wrath of God will abide upon you? How do you think God the Father would be patient when you are making those things which are not in accord to His will? He has sponsored you the program to be His born slave and you go to do your program apart from the program of Lord God then quite obviously do you think He's going to protect you? We have to read a lesson in Isaiah 6 when the angels which are having the, the seraphims particularly there six wings with two wings they covered their face with two wings they covered their feet and with two wings they fly the first two wings they covered their face they cannot have any glory apart from the word of God to be the rule they covered their feet they cannot walk their walk apart from the walk which God the Father has designed them to walk then we over here on this earth do not tremble at the presence of God to teach the word from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 and we love to preach that which is good for us. We love to teach that which is best understandable for us. But going from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, you are not able to preach it out. Therefore, you lose your fatness. You lose your sweetness. And you lose your cherishing attitude. That's what we read yesterday from the standards of Israel, which it had a lesson to learn from Judges chapter 9, verses 8 through following. The olive tree, it has lost to go and make the disciples or missionary work. The fig tree, when the hunger of the Lord God has to be cherished and nourished, it couldn't satisfy. Therefore, he said, chopped it off and withered it off. And the one, he said, don't see that there is no way that that could go again on that in Matthew chapter 12 when he writes over that principle and when it comes to the wine tree Isaiah chapter 5 instead of getting sweet wine it bought sour wine in comparison to John chapter 15 for us in the church age the great missionary work which has been handed over for us to do the great and unique will of God the Father so these three things, spiritual duties, religion duties, and national duties, they failed over there. They lost the fatness. They were the divine custodians of the word of the Lord of our God. They lost the fatness. They were the people who should be readily available to give, 
the word of the Lord of our God to the entire world and satisfy the hunger of the Lord of our God. But they did not do it. Therefore, God, he says, I am impatient with them. And we know the 69th week being ended up. And now they have to be in the standards of waiting to the 70th week to begin. In the meantime, we have been sandwiched between the two advents of this people of, of Israelites to Christ Jesus of the Lord. Between these two advents, it is what we now, the church, have been sandwiched. So, a caution of letter for us. Have you lost your fatness? Have you lost your sweetness? Have you lost your true wine of cheerfulness towards God and towards man? They claim a question. Do you think you want me to cease from the work of my fatness? Do you want me to cease from the work of my sweetness? Do you want me to cease from the work of my cheerfulness which would cheer God and man? The word wine over there is right Bible doctrine. And when you have a right Bible doctrine in you, you will get sweet wine. You will not get a sour wine. Therefore, we find over here a passage for us that God the Father is impatient. So in Ezekiel chapter 1, the right duty of the pastor teacher, if he would have done it, we wouldn't have found such mistakes. So he writes, When they went, I heard the noise of their wings. It was like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of a host. When they stood, they let down their wings. We shall look into this because it is having a lot of essence when we are compared to the messenger of Lord God of hosts as these angels, the way how they moved. So we read from the Hebrew, which says for us in verse 24, number one, I am hearing the sound of the wings of them. You know what is the wings over there? The wings represent the powerful strength of the Lord of our God which has been given for us as a promotion to have that authority. And we are having that strength and promotion of authority by taking in the word of God. At the moment of salvation, we have this bona fide gift by faith alone in Christ alone. Under that authority of the Lord of our God, we need to preach whether they hear or forbear. And how it would be? It would be a sound of many waters. And the way how he climbs over here, like the noise of great waters. What are the great waters? From Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. That is the noise of the great waters, which today the pastor has failed to proclaim to the congregation. Because of the failure in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4, which we have also read. The four times using the word called to be Ra'a in the Hebrew. When you fail to pursue with your eyes and ears. When you fail to establish your heart and pursue the things which God the Father wants to show in your heart and the things which God the Father wants you to still further look, when you fail to pursue that, when you fail to look into it, when you fail to understand those things, then you will fail to nagad the things which Lord God the Father wants to teach to these people. When you fail that, then many waters have not been given to the churches today. Weekly ones, they think the way what they're teaching and preaching is enough, but that doesn't match. It's many waters. It's great waters. Every time we go from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, every time we come to take a word, we, ta we come to take a verse in the word and love to expound it. You know, it takes a lot of time. Still yet much of the doctrine has been left over there. As for example, if you would look in Psalms chapter 91, in verse 9, here there is a word which we need to learn. It says over here, which we, which we couldn't emphasize yesterday, but over here we find this word for us which says in Psalms 91, in verse 9, saying that, Because you have made the Lord which is thy refuge. The word made, we forgot to expound. It says, if you have appointed, firmly appointing in your heart, nothing but the word of God to be your rule. People don't have that today. They love to believe what the world goes to preach. They love to believe what the world is teaching in rationalism and empiricism. But they haven't performed or established or firmly fixed or determined upon their heart what the word of God should be. So here he says, but because you have made, the word made is nothing but firmly fixed and established. That is what is lacking today in our pulpits. We live, we live for the word of God. We live in the word of God. 
We serve Christ in truth because he resides in truth. We read that in Jeremiah 4 2. The Lord liveth in truth. The Lord does his works in righteousness. The Lord executes his judgments, what he has given for us in the completed canon of scripture. And you have to appoint your heart now. You have to firmly fix and establish. If ever you live, you live for truth. No compromise with the word of God. And that's what today people are not able to realize. They think they can get compromised and they can live the life. But here he says, if you have made, because you have made. The word made is not asa, but it is called to be sum si'im. And the word sum si'im meant to say you have appointed, established, firmly fixed, and you have fashioned up to have everything of a care. You know, if ever you talk, you talk the word of God. If ever you breathe, you breathe the word of God. That's what the word called to be sum si'im. And nothing on this earth is important for us than the word of God because everything lieth in falsehood. The world itself is in nidda, sickness, called to be wickedness of a menstrual woman. You don't find anything good over there. Doesn't he teach for us in Jeremiah? Cursed is the one who trusteth man, but blessed is the one who has Lord Jehovah to be his help and shield in time of trouble. How clear the word of God is for us. The failure in the church pastors not expounding the scriptures, not expounding to you the truth, not making you to realize the word of Lord God to be number one priority. They haven't taught many great waters of the word. And since they haven't taught many great waters of the word of Lord God, you haven't made Jehovah to be your only refuge. The word refuge we learned called to be Makeshe. And the word Makeshe meant to say refuge or shelter from falsehood. And that refuge or shelter from falsehood is nothing but to have your protection. You know what falsehood could be for you? There could be no any other way of false things for you until you don't get the right word of God. Until you get the right sound exegetical word of God, what all you have believed, what all you have practiced, what all you have been thinking, they are false. And that's what you and I should learn. How would you protect yourself? Till you could ask what it would be in the Hebrew, what it would mean in the Greek, what it would mean when God the Father has revealed His glory for us in the original Hebrew Greek. But you don't desire that for the Lord. Therefore, you're not able to learn great many waters. And the shepherds who come over here to do the will and work of God the Father, he writes for us in Ezekiel chapter 1 in verse 24 to teach us that, that I'm hearing the sound of the wings, that is the authority which has been given to that angels or having to represent as angels. Even Psalms 103 verse 20 and 21 says, his ministers are angels of fire. Comparison with Malachi 2, he says that the word what they talk will be like the sound of many waters. And that's what you have a lot many things to teach from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. You don't have time many waters you know if we would go on to expound every day the word of god minimum one hour morning one hour evening it would take minimum 70 to 80 years to fulfill it because we have so much of information there when we go back to compare even iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier our life is not enough that's the sound of many waters and that's the duty of the pastor teacher he has to finish the entire bible in teaching Therefore, when he fails to teach that, you're getting vain oblations to the Lord. And he's asking you, who has asked you to trade my courts? Who has asked you to get back and trample before me? I seek mercy, knowledge, he writes in Hosea 4, 6 and 6, 6. Not your sacrifices, your multitude of sacrifices mean nothing to me. Even if you give your firstborn son for the sake of your life, that is as a sin offering to the Lord, even that cannot suffice. Then. 
because he has given us such kind of a great grace to be number one priority to learn the word of God to transform ourselves and to become in the presence of God the Father his word the word became flesh so that now the flesh should become the word of God that's what we read in John 1 isn't it the word which was there in eternal became flesh so that now we on the earth the flesh should become the word of God once again transform ourselves from the stages of milk to bread from bread to meat and we have been not doing to transform or renovate or get back to the right plan of God and to the right work of God then God the Father would intervene with such plagues giving a caution of warning to the shepherds to wake up to responsibility of the duty for what they have been called don't be like the way how the people would think we will go along and run along in the standards like other men who are practicing and they are also great. No, the serious responsibility, you should be a voice of many waters. And from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, when you are rightly dividing the word of God in exegesis, then you are a voice of many waters, dear brethren. And such many waters are lacking today in our pulpit. And this many waters represents for us not only the gospel, not only the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, but also the right word of God to cleanse our garments, to be standing before the presence of God the Father, upright to walk in holiness, in the new man putting upon all the days of our life to serve him in righteousness. That's what the Spirit of the Lord God maketh Zechariah to talk in Luke chapter 1. The thing what he has set us free, we need to serve the Lord God with fear and trembling all the days of our life in righteousness. Because you have to be a man of many waters. Because in in Ephesians 4, he writes now, we all should come to the thorough knowledge of Christ. The same thinking knowledge of my Lord. And then he says, it is a voice who suffices. Do you know the pastor teacher voice, many waters, it is a voice like El Shaddai or Shaddai who will make most perfect. And the word over here, what we keep, Shaddai meant to say, the one which makes us to be absolutely fulfilled. So it goes on to give for us that which is absolutely Shaddai, most perfect. Or satisfying today much of the people are not able to realize the voice which Lord which the pastor teacher has if he's been there in the work of Lord God the Holy Ghost bona fide gift it will be a voice which suffices the word over here when we look in 124 the word called to be for Almighty Shaddai it is most powerful voice the powerful voice which makes for you all to have great impact. Not that you talk with a loud voice. It's a voice of a great powerful impact. That's what the two persons when they were walking on the road to Amamas. When Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spoke to them, their hearts burned off. When Peter spoke to them, you killed or you crucified the Lord of glory, they came back with a repentance of heart and they said, now what we shall do? That's the voice of Shaddai, most powerful voice, a voice which can have impact upon your lives, a voice which will ask you to become scribes, a voice which will make you to fulfill in making disciples of all the nations. If you are not grammatious, you cannot do the will of God in making disciples. Therefore, you have to be the one who writes the written word of God. A voice which is of most powerful, that's what the pastor teachers train you at. Because they are called to be the messengers or the angels of the Lord of our God in Revolution 2 and 3 as well. The historical trends for the church age, the seven spirits hold it up in the hand of the Lord of our God of right one to give to the seven churches. So these are the men, these will be the men of most powerful voice. A voice which they teach in the standards of exegesis. A voice which they fear and tremble at the word of God to give proper honor for every iota and carrera. 
This is the character of them. But today you don't find such shepherds. They are not looking upon the seriousness of the condition what the word of Lord God should deal with. They are not able to realize what is that that has been given in their hands, the most powerful weapon of all time, the most powerful weapon to teach you, that's the life. If you have that word of God in you, you have everything. You have the one call to be creator. There is no need for you to look into creation. You have creator. You have the one who is been provider and you don't look for the gifts because you have the giver in you. That's the most powerful word. Having the word of God is such life. You cannot have any other greater set of wealth on this earth apart from the word of God being taught and clearly explained for you. In the original languages of the scriptures, dear brother. So it's a voice of many waters that is having a burden to teach the word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. It is a voice of most powerful one which could lead you to look into the great standards of the right word of God. And it is a sound, again he calls, voice of great declaration. And the word called to be Ma-Mula. And the word Ma-Mula meant to say, the strong word number 1399, roaring. It is a voice like rushing. It is a voice of rain strong. <laughs> Do you know what the passive teacher does? Why they call it to be the voice of the Spirit? Why they call it to be the mind of Christ? Because he is representing the Lord. In the Old Testament, the prophets would call, Thus said the Lord. In the New Testament, when the apostles have done their work, it is a bona fide duty of the pastor teacher. And when it is the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to teach to you all very clearly the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, you have been stated, you have been called very clearly, very specifically, to be the voice of roaring, the voice of rushing, the voice like a rain thundering strong, and every day when you preach the word of God, when you, every day you have the burden of the word of the Lord God to teach, every message will be like a voice of roaring, a voice of most powerful one. Because every word what you talk in exegesis is been told for us to nagad and declare when you perceive, when you inspect, when you study, when you go back and give according to the present situation or in the situations to come in the future. Because it is the very essence of God called to be the glory of God. The word what you are handling today is nothing but the word of God, which is the glory of God. So he writes in Colossians 4, for it is binding upon me to preach. It's an unavoidable circumstances for me to preach because it is a must that you need to preach. And if you don't preach, he says in Romans or in 1 Corinthians, it's a curse. I'm debtor, he says in Romans, I'm a debtor to the Lord of a God in the preaching of the gospel. And who will preach? Those are having the fear of the Lord of a God, what daily they're teaching in the pulpits about the marinma care in the church. And the glorious life, what for a pastor teacher has been given, they describe this angel. They are having the characters of this. First of all, they will be having many waters from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, their portion of scripture. It will be like most powerful voice. It will be the voice of roaring, rushing. And what they do with that? They develop a camp. The word camp to be as macacac, which meant to say the one which have been encamped with armed weapons. That's the way how the pastor teacher will train the church. Every believer who could defend easily the fiery darts of Satan which has been put in his mind. You know, Satan loves to throw his arrows or even bombshells if needed. So what you do, you build up a large shield of faith called to be doctrine. So as I've been daily graduating in the word of the Lord of our God, you develop such faith and you stand against the fiery darts of Satan and you snuff them off. That's what you will be like a great army which has been encamped. And what they do? They are relaxing. When you do the work of the Lord God, 
you not only relax yourself towards Lord God because you are performing the will of God, you also make the congregation to be relaxed because of the great extremity power of God the Father given to us in his dexterous trial. The one who could face the Lord of a God is the one who has done his work. And you forgot what is your work. You forgot to become scribal authority to the Lord. You forgot to join as disciples and grow up as grammatias, Matthew 13, 52, in order to go and make disciples of all the nations, Matthew 28, 19. You forgot your real bona fide duty. You are relaxed. But you are not relaxed by doing the work of the Lord. You know, having to face the reality, doing the work of the Lord God and the relaxation, what you have over there, no matter 10,000 fall on our side, 1,000 fall on other side, as we read in Psalms 91. Though there is an enemy of death over you, you know, you don't fear that. Because you have done the duty of the Lord of a God. And doing the duty of Lord of a God, God the Father is pleased on our lives. He's going to have the desire of Him upon our lives. Therefore he claims, why are your vain oblations to me? Anything apart from graduating or renovating your mind in the standards of Bible doctrine, whatsoever you have done, that which is not in accord or perfection with the word of God, that's a vain oblation in the presence of God. So he writes for us over here, dear brethren, in Isaiah chapter 1, saying in verse 14, I am weary to bear them. The practice is what all you have done. I don't have patience to bear them any longer. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Because you are spreading your forth your hands to pray. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Because your hands are full of blood. Not the blood that you have murdered someone, but the people who are perishing without knowing my Christ who are unbelievers. Because you should be the one who could open the gates, but you are the one having the keys. Haven't opened or neither you entered yourselves to look upon the great, mighty, powerful words of Bible doctrine. Neither you have made others also to hear. You know, you should be like that Samaritan woman who went and evangelized. You should be like the way how Nehemiah brought into captivity the Jewish girl and she showed him the path so that he could be healed. At least you should have that information to lead. If you're not able to constantly blow up, don't worry. At least make up in your prayers to show to others what is the truth. And take it granted, people will not be happy to listen to the truth. They want that which could have for their itching ears to be heard. That's what the perilous times he writes in Second Timothy. People will not endure sound Bible doctrine. They do not want any way sound Bible doctrine today. Don't worry, the way you reject sound Bible doctrine, the greater you will pay with your nose. That's what people are being harassed. People have been slaughtered, people have been killed, and they quickly come now to ask to God what is the right way. But even that time they're not coming with a heart prepared to be a great disciple of the word of God and to grow up as grammatias. They come only to show humbleness so that they could escape the wrath of God, as Rehoboam did in Second Chronicles chapter twelve. And God the Father is so specific in writing over there the reason when you have been established, when you have been stabilized, he said, you forsook the Lord because you transgressed against the Lord. I bought you this army, Shishak, against you and he's going to take away your freedom. And what did he do? He humbled. When he humbled, God the Father gave him a chance. But he writes again in verse 14 of the same chapter 12 in Second Chronicles saying that the wrath of God was upon them because they did not prepare their hearts to seek the Lord of a God. Is that the case today with you? And people may be thinking we are coming to the courts. We are coming giving to God many things. We are making many good works. Just forget it, dear brethren. So he says, when you pray, I will not hear, when, because your hands are full of blood. And therefore he says, get out from the work of which you have been called and do the work for what you have been actually occupied before the foundation of the world, the good works of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is to go and make evangelism and we have to go and make disciples of all the nations. So he says in verse 16, wash, make you clean. The word wash is nothing but to take a bath. 
as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in John 13 teaches to us when Peter was been asked to when he was been said he's going to wash his feet Peter says no Lord I will not make you to touch then he said you do not have any part with me then he said you once again make me to have entire wash he says once bath is enough then you have to use rebound by washing your hands and legs the same procedure over here the first one wash it is bathe to believe in the lord and savior jesus christ and then he says make you clean the word over here clean is called to be the one to be pure and clean that is zaka which meant to say as lord and savior jesus christ figuratively showed us to wash the feet of the disciples as to be using rebound over here in our context and not only wash not only being born again be also in the fellowship that is clean put away the evil of your doings that's what people are not able to recollect back the word put away is nothing but to depart he says depart from the evil the word evil is called to be that roa which meant to say morally physically which is wicked to the law that which is disgusting thing displeasing thing that which will injure your spiritual life so he says be far from your evil and then further says of your doings the word doings is nothing but practice again prasa but the hebrew word is called over here ma la m double a l a l ma la it meant to say what you endure in practicing what you have as an act in dealing severely so dear brethren he writes over here to teach wash away use your believing if you are not a believer believe in the lord use rebound and then put away the evil of your doings what you have been practicing from before my eyes that which is in front of me and that which is always in the physical eye of me you know whatever you do it goes before the eyes of the lord therefore every believer should wake up to know everything whatever you do you have to do it in truth because we have been said in galatians 5 if ever you breathe you have to breathe in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost you have been stated over there to learn a lesson if ever you walk peripata or walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost if ever you have been walking he says now not only just to walk but march in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost the three solid reasons why he writes is that now you have to reside in the area called as truth because every step of you are been bought before the eyes of the lord every thought is been bought even the imagination behind those thoughts is been in the presence of god so he writes for us put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes the word before is called to be naged which meant to say straight forward or the purpose what you are doing it i know it very well so he says that which is before me the word naged comes to be called to be nagad and the word meant to say whatever you think in your inner mind before me before my eyes my eyes is pani im physical eye spiritual eye but over here from before the word meant to say nagad nagad and the word nagad nagad is nothing but your every thought or imagination behind the thought whatever you are doing it is before me that's why every believer should wake up when he's getting his thoughts he may be acting outwardly something but inward what is happening is thinking that's what he is really if he doesn't honor the word of the lord god if he doesn't give number one priority to the mind of christ if he doesn't give that which is right and perfect in the sight of the lord of a god in his thinking as well therefore you should ask and examine expose and investigate yourselves and return to the ways of the lord as lamentations 340 teaches to us you should expose examine and investigate the ways of you and what are those things which you need to examine investigate and expose whether your thoughts match the word of god whether your thoughts align to the glory of god and if you don't have those things in your mind then constantly remember you are every thought every deed before the eyes of the lord they come your every doings 
which you have been practicing, they are always before the Lord. Therefore, Joseph said, how could I sin against the Lord? But David gave an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Therefore, during the reprimandation of Nathan in 2 Samuel 12, he says to him, You have done it secretly, but I will make it to happen in a Sunday light. In the sunlight I will make it to happen. The same thing what he has done. For the things what David has done with the woman of Uriah, the child was struck with sickness. He was stricken him with sickness. You know the reasons why by the Bible records so clearly because it's the glory of God. He hates that which is not in accord to his righteous judgments in truth. Therefore he gives us a caution of warning to learn from the historical trust book of the Old Testament and to learn and apply in the New Testament those things which could match to his glory forever. You cannot have a reason to say, I do not know this, I do not learn this, I do not have been experienced this in my life because you haven't read the word of God, neither being taught by the angel of God to be your pastor teacher. That's what he is. He is the messenger of Lord God of hosts. People would love to come to learn from him what Bible doctrine. If you're going for any other purpose apart from learning Bible doctrine, he's not the messenger of the Lord God of hosts. He has come for his survival. Is not representing the principle of the characters of a pastor teacher in Ezekiel 124. Many waters is not burdened to teach from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. His voice is not the voice of most powerful one in the sense of preaching nothing but the truth. And is not a voice of great rushing, roaring one, so that he could create a big army to the Lord and send them in the work of the Lord. When he has failed these things, he cannot be a pastor for you. He cannot be an angel of the Lord of a God for you. Therefore, he says, your practices, your thoughts, your intentions, and even the things what you thought behind it could be great. All those things God the Father knows very well before it could come upon your mouth. So he writes over here for us. Your doings from before my eyes. Put away the evil. The word put away is nothing but to throw out, depart. So the things what David did in a secret was being shown daylight. Therefore we have been said all the time to be always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and do the things which please God the Father, not man. Because he looks when we are doing it. It is doing before his eyes. So furthermore he writes, cease to do evil. Once again a command, kadal. Kadal meant to say to desist. The same thing what the trees said, do you want me to cease or desist and let back my sweetness, my fatness, my cheeringful nature and let go to become a king over the trees. If they did not cease. They did not desist. They did not live off. They did not become idle from the work what they have been called. But here God the Father says, become idle to the works of evil or to the works of devil and become alert in doing the great good works of Bible doctrine before the foundation of the world for what you have been kept alive in Christ. Cease, he says, kadal, to do evil, but to do good, he says, cease not. That's what we are here. What is that good? Preaching the word of God through our lives by shining out in our lives the mind of Christ. Doing that you don't stop. But doing evil you just seize it. Desist it. Live it off. Because the greater you put evil it's as good as you're poisoning your own body. You're sinning against your own flesh. And God's righteous judgment will be always the same. Those who sin they die in sin. Therefore, he has given it the option of rebound, get back. Now, what is the work with this flesh? You come only once in this flesh. 
witness of right fight to the Lord. Never give an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme in choosing you in the presence of God the Father in this great historical church age of this great period what we are living now because we have been said that this dispensation of the church age is unique. You will not have again this dispensation dear brother. So have got your life be careful to be thankful to the Lord and live the life of Christ. For the very opportunity what he has bestowed upon us. There are many who couldn't have it, but you're still having breath in your nostrils. Tomorrow, if you're alive, be thankful to the Lord and go to learn from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. There is not an enough. In the life in this world, people will say, it's enough. When you put them enough food to eat in a meal, they say, I am full, I am enough. And regarding the lustful patterns of the evil works, they will say, no, they want a lot of money. Greater than that, greater than that, if you would understand the word of God without no matter however you go to slice it, no matter however you go to expose it, no matter however you try to read it, it is never ending mine. A mine of great wealth of the Lord. It's a never ending mine. You may fail to dig and take it, but the word of the Lord God, it's a never ending mine of a great wealth. You get all the time great gold. You get all the time great pleasure. And that pleasure is our life. If you make it up, no evil will be in you, he said. In Psalms 91 10. But he has to be your habitation. He has to be your retreat. He has to be everything for you. You have appointed, you have fixed your mind only to keep him to be for you forever in your counsel, in your guidelines. Not to believe the hearsay, not to believe the words of this man. The first thing you should ask whether it is there in the word of the Lord of a God or not. Therefore he says, cease to do evil. And then what does he say in verse 17? Learn to do well. The word learn is called to be lama. You have to become a mantano plus didasco. The two Greek words equivalent to one Hebrew word called as lama. Mantano, discipleship, didasco, teaching. You should have to learn. And what does he say? To do well. The word well is called to be yata, which meant to say that which is pleasing to God the Father. You cannot learn in an instant. Therefore, he spanks you. First he gives you warning. Wise ones are the one who heed the warning and come in the fear of the Lord God to learn. And those who are left out having not the COVID positive for them or who haven't been soaked up with COVID positive, they will be the wise one if they would wake up now to come back to do the will of God, the warning what has been given. And the second stage also, those who have gone to the till to the point of death, which is nothing but they have been into the ICU units and who have recovered back, who have come back from such death of life. It's for them. The second category, what they need to become disciples. And those who are dying and perishing, it's the third category, sin unto death. So he says, learn, Montano, become disciple. For what? To do that which is well-pleasing to God the Father. Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3. Again, followed by Colossians chapter 4 in verse 18. Do that which is good and well-pleasing to God the Father. Over here he talks about the gift, what he gave, which could be added to your account. Over there in Romans 12, he talks your body to be the living flesh to God as good, perfect, acceptable in the sight of God. So you need to learn these things very clearly, dear brother. Learn to do well. Is there anything that is well in you so that God the Father could be pleased? If not, learn. If you have been there not with COVID positive soaking activity, then it's a warning for you. Wake up your cross. Take, wake up, take up your cross every day. Follow my Christ. Become his disciple. If you have been taken to the point of that, that's the second stage of discipline. And you have recovered out from the IC units. Come back and make yourselves to prepare your hearts to learn the word of God. If you're not a scribe, grow up as scribe. Write the word of God. When you write the word of God, you have lot many things to learn wherewith you would claim and ask, these things haven't been taught. When shall we learn? After you depart from this earth? Be careful, dear brethren. That is the boundary of all human affairs. Before you die, be prepared to meet the Lord. Enough of the grace has been given as he claims over there in Psalms 90. Help me to count my days unto wisdom, O Lord. Why he has to look upon the seventh fold of the spirit, Kakma. 
In order to get the seventh or sixth fold of the spirit kakma, he has to first have the five fold of the spirit, which is nothing but the fear of the Lord God, and then the knowledge, and then to become the Gebor man of strength, and then to have the counsel, and then to have the wisdom, the fifth one, and then the sixth one, wisdom. The prayer of Psalmist over there in Psalms 19 verse 12, help me to count my days unto wisdom. Why? Because you have to finish your work as a scribe. You have to grow up as a scribe. You have to do disciples. Where are your disciples as a scribe? And every believer has been called to be in a full-time ministry, witnessing the truth, becoming an ambassador to the Lord. You cannot run away from this responsibility, dear brother, no matter you may say that duty is for the pastor or evangelist or a brother who is, who is looking into the standards of godly ways or pious ways of life. No, it's for everyone in Christ who believes in the Lord. Therefore, he writes in Galatians 3, 26 and 27, baptized in Christ, no Jew, no barbarian, no Greek, or in the standards of having no male or female. Everyone have this unique spiritual life. That doesn't mean you have authority to preach over the man being woman. It's a common spiritual life to all given to us. Have you executed that? A woman over the strength of a woman real. Not to have authority over the men. And if it don't change these practices, dear brethren, in the pulpits, the wrath of the Lord God will let abide. The church, if Christ our Lord of God is the head, in your side I'm asking if it is the church, the if, if in the church Christ our Lord of God is the head, in fact indeed Christ our Lord of God is the only head for the churches which work according to exegetical word. But the churches who haven't looked or understood that Christ our Lord our God is the head, for them, do you ever thought your body listens as your head says or your body or as your body says your head will listen? You know, people don't understand this. It is what the head says and the body listens. What the Christ our Lord our God being the head of us, the church, what he says that should be run in the church. Not what the people are coming together as a committee and practice and they say, we have been practicing this over centuries of standards of denominations in us and we will do the same thing. So don't worry, hell with you. Those who don't honor the word of the Lord our God, we cannot be with them. Better be alone as Joshua said. And he said, me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. He said unto them, you cannot serve this true, jealous, living Lord our God. They said, we will serve. Be careful and you put a witness over there. Even your life, every word what you talk, every breath what you take, every move what you make, will be witnessed by the surroundings of your people. The stones cry out, he said. Every stone will be a witness for the words what you talk. So be careful. Have you witnessed them the gospel? Have you shown them the true life? The details and the affairs of the life will end up. But the affairs of Christ will go on till eternity. Show them the path of Christ. Be always as a cunning one to say, as wise as serpent and harmless as dove. If the people are searching for Caesar activity, show them the Caesar. If the people are searching for godly activity, show them the paths of God. Learn to do well. And when you will learn to do well, dear brother. And then he writes, the rush, seek. That is, to make a diligent inquiry, judgment. The word judgment is called to be the ordinances of the Lord. Relieve the oppressed. The word relieved is called to be yasher. Make them to walk straight and make them to progress. Those who are oppressed, the oppressed are the people, what you think, who are under BPL line or low category of line. No, these are the oppressed ones who have been constantly worried or sword or leavened or having to be ruthless cruelty by false doctrines and false beliefs. Relieve the oppressed. Therefore, Lord our God said, Continue in my word, then only are my disciples indeed. And how do you continue in my word? He teaches to them, When you know the doctrine, the doctrine shall set you free. That is relieving the oppressed. The word relieve is to make them to walk straight. 
and teach them the right word of God. Judge the fatherless. The word judge is nothing but govern, vindicate, fight for the justice of those who are fatherless. The word fatherless is nothing but who could be a bereaved person or an orphan. And why the fatherless over here and then he calls over the widow? Because male is the head of the family. What the pastor teacher teaches, the male should learn and he should come back and teach to the woman and woman should in return having the great patience to teach to the children she has to teach. That's the order in the plan of God. Therefore 51% for the man in responsibility over 49% of the woman so that they could be 100% in the marriage life. That's the order. In Malachi 2.14 also we read, The breath which has been left over, the remaining breath he breathes into the nostrils of your woman. And what the reason they will be go, both getting married to have godly children. Earlier it was not so, it was for recreation, but now it became procreation. Godly children is the purpose. So the fatherless and the widow are the category where there is no male, no head. So those who are fatherless and the widow, for them, pastor teacher is the father. Pastor teacher is the one who guides and leads them because he is the second guardian, the first guardian being our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So dear brethren, he says, judge, the word judge is to do that which is right and govern and vindicate and plead. The word plead is nothing but strive. Give them the right word of God as Job says in one of his chapter describing, I haven't made anything that which is default to the widows or to the fatherless. I broke the teeth of them that dealt unjustly with them and gave them that which is right in their sight. And then he says, when you learn when you, relieve, when you seek judgment, when you relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow, then he says, come now. The word come now is called to be yalak, make it to be a manner of life. Let us reason together. The word reason over here is yakak, which meant to say correction, reproof. Said the Lord, though your sins be as a scarlet, your missing marks are like the crimson stone or the crimson dye, he says, they shall be as white as snow. The word white refers to purity and then he says the word snow is nothing but for us shalag as witnesses you have to be though they be red like crimson again the word red is nothing but adama as a man and the word crimson is tola to ela'a which is meant to say a worm which could live behind that mark so he says though you have been red like an adam or a worm like an adam they shall be as wool which meant to say for us as white as Christ, the way how he would appear in his second appearance for us, the second advent of the Lord. That's what every believer has to confirm now to the image of Christ. Romans 8. Every believer should now they have the same thinking of the Lord of a God, confirming to his maturity of thinking. Then they will be as white as wool, though they will be like red like crimson. Then they will be as the way white as snow, though there may be many sins. Then you may be free from the death penalty and you may once again come back to be as white as snow and as to be as white as wool. So he says, if you be willing and obedient, the word willing is nothing but to be having a great desire and obedient is nothing but shamma, to listen, to obey to God, you shall eat the good of the land. The word eat is nothing but you be fed with the things that are pleasant and agreeable in your inner mind to Christ. You shall eat the good of your land. But if you refuse and rebel, that's what today people are loving to do again, in spite of such COVID sickness. He says, if you are contentious, you are rebellious, you shall be devoured. The word devoured is nothing but akel, burnt up. How? With the sword. Sword represents again the word of Lord God, the Rimata declaration of Bible doctrine, the standards. He doesn't go against his word. He has given enough of grace to wake up to the standard of the word of God to correct our lives. We should be thankful to the Lord of our God being sent many missionaries to translate the Bible into our language but that doesn't suffice you have to go back to the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic by putting them in your base so that you could be not devoured by the sword of the Lord of a God at the judgment seat of Christ because he said the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it if you refuse and rebel you will be devoured by the sword if you turn back 
if you are willing and if you are obedient that is called to be always in the standard to be in desiring or working or breathe after and if you have been obedient that is shamma to protect you shall eat the word eat is nothing but you shall be fed with the right word of god and that right word of god will cause you to be making good of the land or to be in the standards of pleasing to god the father so dear brethren which way you want to go you want to be the pastor teacher representing the angel of jehova and feed them the right word of god so that the congregation could save and come back and learn the mind of christ and be the disciples of the word of the lord or you want to be a man who haven't even had a serious condition in his life to realize what is this great and unique will of god the father given to us in the church life is too short dear brother don't waste your grace the first warning if you haven't been soaked up with still corona sickness be alert in the warning discipline in the warning discipline become wise if not you will be in the second stage of discipline intensified stage where many are dying today without having to know the purpose of life these are the trees which will never produce fruit though the gardener with plead it is in the grace of god it is his will because much damage what you have done by grieving squelching waxing lying and resisting lord god the holy ghost the same damage you will pay back those are left over as a small remnant the same thing what he prays in isaiah 1 8 and 9 if it is not by the grace of god you don't have been left over like sodom and gomorrah as well today the world is like the sodom and gomorrah left over remnant even if this left over remnant if the elders of the people don't come up to make a bible doctrine to number one priority to learn the many waters to become the voice of shaddai to become like the voice of a roaring rushing work and getting into the army of the lord god in doing the will of god many will perish dear brethren it's your life god the father has given us this life not to die in sickness by 70 or 80 he has made us this life to be helpful and comfortable to to wisdom the words to wisdom the days of our life to his life to his word and to become that which is pleasing to him he has given us this grace for that purpose and nothing else than that and if you are not making valuable use of this life tomorrow when you stand in the presence of god you are giving an occasion to the enemies of god to blaspheme by secretly grieving squelching waxing and lying and not walking upright in the presence of god by performing his work dear brethren which way you want to go you decide this is your life we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those of without christ without hope and without eternal life in order to tell lord god the father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my christ my lord my rock my savior that's the moment itself you shall have the eternal truth the eternal truth for us for very simple believing christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine by which you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teachers the greatest matter is to carry sathon lagan herald the word in season out of season because the dhamma to my witnesses where you have been called the number one dhamma to my witnesses in well infinity followed by bible in our hands and number two dhamma to my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brother not worry be such nature the entire angelic host will be witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter how the chips may fall so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy ghost lead us to the praise of his glory in his grace infinitely divine holy father what a great and unique privilege it is all lord to understand from isaiah 1 the many lessons to read why you tread in the courts of the temple of god without having proper understanding of the mind of christ much of the things they have done in vain oblations o lord and you are impatient to bear them help us father to teach this truth to these people if they have really understood help us father to make them to be in the voice of Ezekiel 124 as the angel of Jehovah as you have made every minister to be as the messenger of you like angels so father what else can we ask o lord to be your blazing flame of fire and to train the people to make your great army 
for making disciples of all the nations. When they join us disciples and grow up as Gromatias because you have reduced your glory in the very form of writing so that every believer could have this writing in their minds. And if they would open up as Second Peter 3 to teach us nothing but the word of God. Help us Father to teach this and to train them up so that every breath of their life you could be pleased by their lives and you could give and grant them greater grace because you always give grace to the humble believer and that greater grace we enjoy as James 4, 6 teaches the Lord when we are casting all our burden upon thee to care and to worry on your work on this earth. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.